In this next part, we're looking at factoring 16x to the fourth minus 81. Now we start thinking, is there a GCF? So pause the video here, convince yourself that there is no GCF between 16 or 81. And then the next question, how many terms do we have? Well, we have two terms. So we want to try to see, can we convert this into a difference of squares or a difference of cubes? It can't be a sum because we have a minus in the middle. So with two terms, those are the two uh, formulas that we want to try to adapt it as. And then let's look at what the numbers are telling us. 16, 81, a fourth power. These are all perfect squares. So we want to try to rearrange this problem so that it looks like maybe a difference of squares perhaps. So 16x to the fourth, we can rewrite that as the square of 4x squared. Uh, really, just take a look at the square roots. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared, so that goes inside. Square root of 81 is 9, so that goes there. And now this is a difference of squares, so our formula works. a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. a plus b times a minus b. Again, convince yourself, pause the video here, convince yourself why this cannot be factored. Why does this just keep coming along for the ride? On the other hand, we can rewrite 4x squared, again, as a square, 2x the quantity squared. 9 can be rewritten as 3 the quantity squared. So this is a difference of squares. Hopefully that gives you a hint as to what this is and why it cannot be factored. If this is a difference of squares, we can factor it again using the same formula we used here as a plus b times a minus b. So we get 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. And this is finished at this stage. This cannot be factored further. One more like this, if we have x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus 45. Here again, we have three terms, and there's a leading coefficient of 1, so there cannot be a GCF, at least with the number. And this term does not have an x in it, so no variables can be the GCF either. We see that this is the square of the middle term, or the power is twice as high as the power of the middle term, so we do a substitution again. And as a reminder, there's nothing special about u. You could have used any other variable just besides x. You don't want to confuse the two x's together. So if we let u equal to x squared, and then we square both sides, we end up with u squared equals x to the fourth. And now we can make a substitution. We can go from x land to u land exclusively. x to the fourth is the same as u squared, so that's the substitution there. This x squared is the same as u, so negative 4x squared gets converted to negative 4u. Minus 45, minus 45. There's no x's here, so no conversions needed. This factors to u minus 9 times u plus 5. And at that stage, you can just replace the u back with what we had substituted in, in the first place, x squared. So u gets replaced with x squared. This u gets replaced with x squared. So we're left with x squared minus 9 times the quantity x squared plus 5. Hopefully you're starting to see these happen a little bit faster. This is a difference of squares. So we can factor this into a plus b times a minus b. So we get x plus 3 and x minus 3. 5 is not a perfect square, so there's nothing we can do with this. For star 9, work through this problem, work through the solution, convince yourself either that it's correct or find the mistake if there is one. Last example in this section is example five, and this is just a plain problem. We're given nothing, no crutches, no sort of safety wheels. Uh, this is just factor each polynomial completely. So this is what you should expect on quizzes and assessments. First thing, we think of the GCF. Is there a GCF to all these three terms? So we have x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x. There's a GCF of x. All three terms have an x in them, and I can factor that out. So let's do that. Once we factor out the GCF, we open parentheses. How do we know what goes inside? Well, we divide each term by the GCF. So if we divide x cubed by x, we get x squared. If we divide negative 4x squared by x, we get negative 4x. Dividing negative 5x by x, 
gives us negative 5. And now if we factor this, x squared minus 4x minus 5, we get x minus 5 times x plus 1. Remember to keep your GCF handy. This cannot vanish. A uh, common mistake here is that students just forget about the GCF. They think because it's factored out, it's gone. That's not the case. The next one is 3y to the fifth minus 48y to the third. The GCF here is 3y to the third. There's a 3 that goes into 3 and into 48. And then y cubed can be factored out of both y to the fifth and y cubed. So that's my GCF. I open parentheses immediately after writing the GCF. How do I know what goes inside? Well, I divide the terms by the GCF. So 3y to the fifth divided by 3y squared, sorry, 3y to the fifth divided by 3y cubed will give us y squared. Negative 48y to the third divided by 3y to the third will give us negative 16. The y cubes will cancel each other out. Now, once we factored out the GCF, the next question the decision tree asked us to ask was, how many terms do we have? Well, we have two terms. There are four things to try when you have binomials to be factored. Difference of squares, a sum of squares, which it won't be because there's a minus in the middle, a difference of cubes, and a sum of cubes. Now, y squared, I mean, it's in the name, is a square, and then 16 is a perfect square as well, a 4. So this can be factored by using the difference of squares formula to y plus 4, y minus 4. These two are star problems, so again, uh, consider the solutions that are given, solve them yourself. If there are mistakes, identify them. If there are no mistakes, note it in your uh, notes as such.